Hello, good afternoon. Uh, my name is Peter White. I'm the international editor of Broadcast Magazine. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. Um, we are going to talk about MasterChef. I hope everyone's had a, had a nice lunch because I'm sure um, what we're talking about will make, uh, make you very jealous of, of what you had. Um, on my far right, we have Mark Fennessy, who is the CEO of Shine Australia. To his left is Thierry Alacar, who's the CEO of Shine France. Uh, Nadine Noor, who is the CEO of Shine International, and Joe Bastianic, who's one of the judges and of both the US and the Italian version of MasterChef. Um, so I think before we kick off, I think we're gonna, we've got a clip that we're going to show to sort of get everyone's appetite a little bit. Will we roll that clip, please? I'm a Bobcat operator from Melbourne. I'm at crossroads with my life. I either follow the family business or follow my passion. I work in a gentleman's club. I can't be an entertainer forever, but I can be a cook forever. One of you will lift the 10th MasterChef title. It's going to be tough, but this is my last chance, so why not? This is real. I want this with every fiber of my being. The biggest cooking show on the planet, MasterChef. I don't want to let my family down. I don't want to let my son down. I need to win. MasterChef is going to give me the courage to take hold of my dreams. This is the only way I'm going to be able to tell my dad how proud I am of him. And your time starts now. I think it takes a very brave cook to present a dish like this. This could be great. Stupid, stupid. No excuses. But no. Enthusiastically crisp. Tears means you want it. You don't realize what 500 soldiers looks like. Oh my god. <laughs> this is properly frightening. We have 80 lobsters. Uh, seven. <laughs> Turn off your gas. You are out. I definitely leave here a stronger person. No matter how far down you go, you can always come back up. Don't panic. Put all the emotion to the food. I want to prove my worth to you. Do not let it out here without it being perfect. This is it, guys. You are not going upstairs to the balcony. Because they are coming down to congratulate you. <laughs> Produced in over 50 countries. Yeah! How good in the master chef? Watched in 200 territories. So it's yes. Yeah, baby! 250 million viewers worldwide. You have no idea how it feels. Explosions happen. Fireworks go on. This is the most successful cooking format on Earth. It's the whole package in one. That's why we cook food. We love making people happy. This is a game changer. It's a life changer. This might be the best day of my entire life. <laughs> I came here with a dream. Now it's really coming true. This is a tribute to my dad. I reckon he's pretty proud of you, man. So we saw some clips from, from right across the, the globe at the formats, but we're going to start in Australia. We're going we're gonna to go there. It's been on air for six seasons. Um, and let's roll back a little bit. Uh, we talk to Mark and, and ask you, you know, give us, why, why did A, did you, you know, want to do it in Australia? And it's had some ups and downs. And, and what have you sort of learned, you know, in that process of those six seasons? Well, in Australia, um, we were, were really responding to... Uh, a brief in 2008, um, uh, which was to really a prime time brief to, to fill the slot occupied by Big Big Brother. So it was put out to all independents. Uh, at the time, we were really looking for something that you know it had to have scale and volume. So it was really very much event television. I had seen MasterChef, the British version of it, quite some years before. Uh, in fact, when the BBC had both the distribution of it and um, the production of it, and of course you know, it still airs on there now, and it was BBC Two back then, and um, we, you know, we actually loved it. And when I when I when I noticed it go in the trades uh, from BBC Two to BBC One after quite still quite a period of time on the air in the UK, of course it started as a daytime show. 
Um, we just felt it had something unique about it. Um, so we spent quite a bit of time on looking at how we could give it scale and volume, but at the same time staying true to the, the original format parameters, which we really loved. Um, it was a very big risk that the broadcaster took at the time to replace Big Brother. We, look, we were talking about really a three-month uh, journey uh, in terms of volume and six nights a week, so it's a lot. So you're taking really a, a weekly show and it, you know, supersizing it to that degree. But we, we put an awful lot of time into it in order to keep it true to itself. Um, and, uh, you know, it started, it started pretty slowly. Um, the network got laughed at. You know, we took a lot of ridicule from the trades, you know, to replace Big Brother with a, a cooking show that had never been done in prime time before, certainly not in our market. So it was a very big swing. Uh, it started slowly and started to climb after the first three weeks. It didn't start with sponsors or anything, and it just kept going north and north and north, and it, was, it became phenomenal. Um, the first couple of series you know, were really off-the-chart numbers, so it was extraordinary, really. Was there no challenge then, once, once you've had some success in terms of, of keeping that and making sure that it become, can become a sort of long-running hit? Yeah, I think with anything like that, um, <coughs> uh, I think it's probably fair to say that with these sorts of mega franchises that it's a lot easier to start small and build when you have really high numbers um, as we did at the end of Series 1. Series 2 is even bigger. Uh, that continued into Series 3. You know, uh, you start then having to figure out how you're going to manage the broadcaster when it starts to decline because it's ultimately going to to some degree. There were struggles with four and five, right, in terms yeah, of ratings? Yeah, when we got further along, um, I think it's important to understand that in Australia, um, anyway, we were talking about something that was stretched quite a long way. After Series 1, we had Celebrity MasterChef. We then did two seasons of Junior. Then we did Professionals. So in five years, we effectively had ten seasons. So I think there was a natural kind of... It's a little bit of viewer fatigue. At the same time, you had suddenly there was a, a raft of other food cooking shows entered the marketplace. So it it became it, it became competitive. And a whole bunch of celebrity, well, a, a whole bunch of professional chefs now in uh, in Australia. It's given exactly. It well, you know, as we were talking about earlier today, the, over six seasons in MasterChef Australia, we've had of all the the amateur cooks that have been through six seasons. There are now some 80 uh, that are working professionally in the food and cooking industry. Uh, and these were just foodies that loved cooking, uh, that had other regular jobs, um, and now they're working professionally in this industry. 80 people in a, a small market. It's quite a considerable amount. No, fantastic. Um, let's look at France a little bit, Thierry. Um, is not selling a British cooking format to the French like trying to sell I to the Eskimos? <laughs> Um, interestingly enough, um, I have to say that France has been quite late at working on cooking shows, and uh, to that extent what the English and the Australians have been doing have been very uh, interesting for us and have created some, some appeal from a, from, a broadcaster, uh, from a broadcaster standpoint. MasterChef will be always something very peculiar for, um, for me. It's been the first show I've been, uh, I've been working on when I, joined, uh, when I joined Shine and when we set up Shine, uh, Shine France. We were only four people working at Shine France when we sold MasterChef to, um, to TF1. So you can easily imagine the kind of pressure that, you, that we've been having on our shoulders with so four people working on 12 primetime shows, 12 second primetime shows on the number one franchise of the of Shine Group for a broadcaster like TF1. It's been an amazing journey. Um, I have to say that what Mark has been doing in Australia is a true testament to what we're doing, all of us, as producers. We're playing with the content. Mark has been remaining very faithful to, religion, to, re, to the original format, but he's been completely like oversizing the show. So right Did now, you look at their version as well as the original? Oh, you would be, you would be surprised to see how close and how faithful Jerry we Jerry came down with uh, about three others from Show yeah. France and also... The whole, the whole team at that time, basically. <laughs> <laughs> the whole company came down. Um, but, uh, and also there was a, a, from a, a commissioner show. from TF1 yeah. also yeah. came down. So they, you know, they spent uh, quite a bit of time at MasterChef Kitchen and uh, looking at uh, all sides of the of the format and the production. 
No, it's been a, it's, uh, the, the English version has been a source of inspiration for all of us because it proved that cooking show where <laughs> cooking shows were really like uh, um, appealing for the audience on a, on, on pre-access prime time. But to me, the Australian version gave a completely different dimension to the show. And for us in France, we're looking very closely to what they're doing in Australia, what they're doing in the United States as well. But we wanted the show to be French as well, and we like. Yeah, what's the differences that you've brought in? What What are the sort of French elements to it? First of all, all the, all the cooking elements. I mean, believe it or not, we like to think that our ways of cooking is slightly different from the Australian or from the Americans, even if it might not be so much the case. <laughs> um, so we, we we try to um, to remain very faithful to what the French cuisine could be. So being really focused on the French cuisine, but talking about Italian cuisine, American cuisine, being very, very mainstream is the approach of the, uh, uh, of, the, of the French cuisine. We tried as well to be very positive. The, the values of MasterChef are really the values that Shine is, uh, is standing up for. We, we like to do talent shows with a positive spin, with contestants who are keen on changing their lives. Um, we like to, uh, we've been trying to look for contestants who were not looking to be part of a TV show, but to be part of an experience which could completely change their lives. And uh, we were happy to see that after, after four series on TF1 of the regular MasterChef, two series of the MasterChef Junior, we have right now lots of contestants who have changed their life. Some of them have become chef. Some of them are working for chef. Um, so to that extent, it's been, um, it's, been, it's been a real success. And has it opened the doors for, for other opportunities in France and, and possibly even abroad? Interestingly enough, um, right now, France is certainly one of the most, let's say, crowded market for cooking shows. You have MasterChef, you have Top Chef, who's doing France-based bakery on, the, uh, on MCs. All the cooking, most of the cooking shows have been successful so far. So it gives to us another, another very interesting challenge. We have to change the show for the fifth series. We will be reshuffling the format, coming with new elements, a lot of surprises for what our... What are you going to do? How are you going to shake it up? It's such a, if this is such a, a competitive um, universe that I will be keeping for me most of the surprises that will be us. coming up. Um, but to me, the, the, the DNA of the format is to be the biggest cooking show ever for non-professional contestants. So we will be making sure that all the, um, all the, the dishes that the contestants will have to prepare will be mainstream dishes that everyone can, can do at home as a housewife or as a, uh, as a, as a, as a, as a chef. Um, and um, interestingly enough, we had the chance to work on the Moroccan version mm. that we did as a co-production with our local partner, Med. Um, and it was interesting because it was a complete different standpoint because we were not so much aware of the local cuisine in Morocco. So we had to really trust our partners in coming up with the right dishes. And we've been helping them and supporting them in producing the show, making sure the show would be well produced. And the, sh the series just started last week. And we were very happy to see that the show got an amazing 47% of audience share on 2M, which makes it the most successful show on the Moroccan television. So How is their version any different to your version and, and the Australian version? How, how is the Moroccan master show? You will see that, I mean, you have some common points, of course. It's a cooking show. You have, uh, you have contestants who are very keen on becoming the first master chef. We're not talking so much about changing your life and becoming a chef, because it's, it's not the, the Moroccan tradition. Um, but we, we, we're trying to keep the same DNA of the show. If you want, we have, I think we have a short promo of the Moroccan right. version, if the people would like to have a show, uh, to have a look at it. Visually speaking, we've been trying to keep the same level of high-hand production values, and it's been successful so far, so we're very happy and proud. Fantastic. Have we got that clip? We can show the, the Moroccan version. <laughs> خمسة دقيق خمسة أربعة ثلاثة جوش واحد جوش من بعد أسابيع عديدة من التنافس واحد منهم غي يحصل على لقب أول ماستر شاف في المغرب ذكي ماستر شاف ورمان برافو الفائز برنامج ماستر شيف المغرب في الدورة ديالو الأولى غادي يفوز بمبلغ 400 ألف درهم وغادي يحصل على تكوين عالي في واحدة من أحسن المؤسسات المختصة في الطبخ والانطلاقة كانت من رمال وكتبان وشواطئ مدينة الداخلة
And so let's go to Nadine for a moment. Nadine, obviously you run Shine International and, and you guys are here and have been for, for a few markets um, talking to everyone around the world about this. And it's just past 50, I think we're into 52 local versions of, of the format. How do you go about it? What's, what's the process for you in terms of, of finding the who the best place and the right home for, for a format like this is? Well, I think given the scale and ambition of the series, it's very much about finding people who are going to share, to share that ambition, to demonstrate commitment, to demonstrate perhaps track, track record in cooking shows. And similarly, when it comes to the judges and the, and the contestants, you want people uh, who, who share that passion for cooking and who are going to stay with it. It's, it's a show that's very carefully nurtured by Shine. Uh, there's a lot of cross-fertilisation of ideas, as you've already heard. Um, we consult on it, we stick with it. So you want to try and find partners who are going to demonstrate that same commitment. Where's left? Where are you, uh, where are you hoping to, to get into next? <laughs> well, there's, so we're in, I'm not sure if it's 52 or 53 markets, but there's plenty more countries in the world, depending on who you talk to on any given day. <laughs> and it's interesting because we're in every continent. So you look at, I don't know, a continent like South America, where there are maybe 12 countries, we're in four of them. So there's all of the rest to clear now. So that's Similarly, something, something for, the, for the, the guys to do down there is to, to try and get it. And um, no, fantastic. Um, and there's obviously different versions. And so you you careful to make sure that that uh, they also have the right home. What's the what's the how do you look at something like junior or professional? I, I, th I think preferably. I mean, MasterChef is such a fantastically strong brand now, which is one of the ways that it stands out from the a crowded cookery kind of market. But I think preferably you want to establish the brand with the the, the first series to begin with. Uh, and from that, you know, what you're bringing people is this fantastic track record. It's in all of these markets. It's mm -hmm. a ratings winner. It's an awards winner. So from a risk management point of view, it's fantastic. But then if you can establish the brand and grow from there to the other versions, there's all the ancillary potential. Uh, I think that, that's, that's the way that we prefer to follow it. And there's many ways you can do it, right? It's not only just a primetime show. If certain places want it in, in other time periods or other ways of scaling it up or scaling it down. Absolutely. I mean, in some places it's stripped, in some places it's weekly. I think that's part of the beauty of the, the format. It has these incredibly strong core formatted elements and at the same time the flexibility to be able to adapt, to reflect cultural diversity to localise it, which is, you know, it's that successful localisation which is part of the ingredient for success. Yeah, what's your favourite version? Uh, I can't answer that. French. <laughs> 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 um, no, lovely. Um, and so obviously, Joe, you've got a slightly different take on this from, an, from an, a couple of reasons. Um, you know, you're obviously on the other side of, of these things. You know, what made you want to get involved with this? Um, it was, you know, Gordon, when he signed up to do it, we were friends, he called me seven years ago. I'm like, look, we're doing this cooking show. You want to, I need someone who's not a chef and knows about food. You want to come out? <laughs> and I went out and we, uh, and we hit it off. But um, it's been an amazing journey for me. MasterChef is a big part of my, not, my life. I'm on, uh, I judge MasterChef USA with Gordon and MasterChef Italy, and we're on season six in the United States. So how, let's go back that step. How did that come about? Obviously, that's rare in itself. Because the Italians came over in season two. They wanted to put it on. I'm Italian, I speak Italian, they made me take the Italians out for pizza, we started talking Italian, they're like, well, why don't you come to Italy and, and judge that one, too? I was like, okay. So, uh, <laughs> and, and then coincidentally, I happened to judge, which I think the two best master chefs of the world, which is Italy and the United States, and, um, and it's really amazing to talk about the fungibility of the format because they're so different, the two shows, and in America, it's hugely successful because it's a very American show, and in Italy, it's hugely successful because it's, it's a very Italian show. And it's funny, the Italian version is, uh, has really penetrated the culture in a significant way. It's part of how it's changed how people speak in Italy. Um, terms that we used on the show, mistakes, are in the vernacular of how people interact, how they talk about the food. Um, inscription to cooking schools is up 50% in all of Italy. So the impact that this sh the show like this has had socially in a culture, and you think France, how about coming to sell you know, pizza to Italians? And that's what, effectively what we did. But MasterChef is so much more than a show about cooking. It's a show about aspiration, about being able to tell, you know, change your life through food and through your passion for food. And that storytelling, that ability of great storytelling is as much of a core capacity of a well-produced MasterChef as the cooking element, in my opinion. And uh, these stories are, are very, very powerful, passionate and watching people change their lives for food is, you know, is a very, very 
game-changing thing. Are the shows structured differently, or is this just as a nature, as a, as a came, reaction? We came, you know, America started after Australia, a year after Australia. We, I think, copied that format as much as we could. Um, America was done in a very American way, so it's a super big show, a very high entertainment value show, and uh, it's worked very well. You know, we brought on Junior. We haven't done all the other iterations. We've kind of stuck very strict, you know, once a year, just MasterChef. Now we've added on, on Junior. We'll talk about that in a minute. And the same thing with Italy, just once, once a year. And the anticipation, I think, that, that people, you can feel the hunger when people really want on social media, the appetite for more MasterChef is, is an amazing feeling. And is, you can really get a sense that people just can't get enough. You know, it's the whole concept. Leave them hungry, don't overfeed them. And, uh. <laughs> Quite. Um, now, what, what are some of the key elements, if I said to you how important are the judges on this show, or how important are the casting, or, or what are the bits that make it not just another well, the cooking judges show? are extremely important. Right. Having brilliant judges does change, is a game changer for the show. No, but the show is really about... The, in, Who's in a lot of judge? Um, I can't say. Um, the, the, the show is really about, not about the judges, it's about the contestants, obviously, and it's us becoming vested in their journey and taking this journey with home cooks all over the country where they come in and they make their first dish and in three months you live this process with them where you watch them become a master chef and then they win and uh, you really, the, the viewer really gets vested in the contestants. So the casting is ultimately, in my opinion, the most important part of the show. I mean, the judges, judges come, judges go, we do a great job, but you know, it's, it's, uh, it's the casting every day that keeps, the, every year that keeps the show fresh and every, every, uh, every season's like a new batch, and no season's alike, and there's a different story to be told, different themes, and uh, it changes every year, which is why people really kind of keep on coming back for it. Have you noticed different types of people being on the show in the States compared to the Italian version? Well, in America, we live in such a multicultural country. We have a, for a fortune that we can do everything. We do Thai challenges, we do sushi, we do, you know, that's really great. We do New Orleans food. We, we, uh, in, in, in Italy, Italians really ultimately only cook Italian food. So it's a little bit more limiting in the sense that we kind of stay within the vernacular of Italian food. But again, it's, it's, it's really about the, the contestant. It's about the story. The challenges come and go. The field challenges are always interesting, too. Um, but it's about the contestants. Do you still feel the sort of same challenges that, that Mark and, and Thierry were talking about in terms of um, making sure that it has a, you know, a long life and, and that you're sort of constantly updating it? You know, it's amazing because I'm not, you know, like, I come from, I'm a, I'm a waiter. I own restaurants. You know, I come to this not from the media business like you guys do. I put on a show, I judge it. I've lived MasterChef. I do it seven months a year. I do three months in Milan, three months in Los Angeles, and then some junior. And I can tell you that, that, if, if, you, if, if you, you gotta leave them wanting more, and there's, in my experience of Italy and America, I don't see an end in sight. I mean, this nope. thing has got legs. It's gonna run forever. Big time. And then we've just had the amazing fortune of, uh, we're gonna be airing season two of MasterChef Junior, which is a game changer for me. And, uh, well, why don't we roll tape on, uh, on some MasterChef Junior? We can watch that. Last year, the Master Chef Kitchen <coughs> opened its doors <gasps> to some of the smallest cooks in the country. Whip me! Whip like a Whip! But one kid's huge talent. It's beautiful. It could be the cover of your cookbook. <laughs> propelled him to become America's first Master Chef Junior. Alexander. Oh my God! His success inspired thousands of young home cooks across the country to try out and earn a spot in the MasterChef kitchen. Now, it's time for the 16 who made the cut to step up to the plate. We're gonna go to a whole new level this year. The challenges will be tougher. We're looking for 20. Perfect, fillet. And the bar set higher than ever before. The first ever MasterChef pop-up restaurant. Where are those fries? It's coming, chef. Yeah, and so is Christmas. They'll have to reach for perfection. It didn't cook all the way. That is not your best place. None of us are A-plus students all the time. But for those who make the top of the class, yeah! the <laughs> rewards will be sweet. That looks world class. It's Thank beautiful, you. man. This is one of the best things I've ever eaten. The sugar work is stunning. Are you sure you're only 12? Yes, I'm sure. But only one can be crowned America's Next. They cook like pros. Yeah. Yay! 
Master Chef Junior. So November 4th, Fox premieres uh, season two of MasterChef Junior. I've done a bit of television in the last seven years now, and the single proudest piece of television that I've ever been involved with is the second season of MasterChef Junior. Remember one name, Abby, when you watch it, and then you'll think of me, and it's incredible. Is she on that trail? Yeah. What, other than the age, is there any difference in terms of the show, other than just how young they are? Well, when we stepped into it, the big thing for us was like, look, we, if it was me, Gordon, and Graham deciding, like, if we're going to do this, we have to treat them like we treat the adults. You know, that's, that's the kind of, in America, we have the ability, like, in other countries, it wouldn't be culturally acceptable. We hold them, we give them tough love, we're all parents, but that tough love reward scenario that we have with them is, is really what makes the show so incredible. The kids are amazing. They, they're, they're, they're great for TV because they, they're honest, they're unfiltered. You ask them a question, you get a real answer. There's no bullshit. Most of them can cook better than the adults anyway. And uh, it just makes for incredible television. They're competitive, they want to win, and then they're cute. Uh, other than, um, I mean, are there certain places, Nadine, that, that, that Junior um, will work better in, do you think? I don't think so, because I think one of the things about MasterChef is it is universal. And I think Junior is universal, so it's a, it's a, a natural progression, has all the qualities of MasterChef, and then this added dimension of these amazing kids in an adult environment. You know, this is a proper grown-up kitchen, and their relationship with the judges, and why would that not work anywhere? Um, what's next? Is there more spin-offs you can do? Are there other ideas that you can work on, Mark? You guys in Australia are sort of leading the charge sometimes with, with this. What's, uh, what's next? Well, I think you've got to be careful about, uh, about over, overdoing it. I think... Um, you know, you don't want, uh, as we've had in Australia, whereby you're having, you know, the temptation to increase the hours. Then you have a variant, another series of a junior at one end of the year, the major series at the other. Um, you know, you, you've really, I think it's great to have it. It's a journey, it's an experience for the viewer. Um, so there are, you know, there are other, other places you can take it, but I think you don't want that to be at the expense of the authentic master chef. Um, with, we've done a couple of series of Junior and we felt that it's great to do it every two seasons, every second year, every other year, um, as opposed to every single year. And it is amazing. The, the, the kids are just astonishing. You can't believe how they can, that they can cook. But I think it's really, you know, uh, really keeping it authentic, you know, for the sake of longevity. I think it's, a, it's, um, it's an extraordinarily beautifully crafted format. It's a, a celebration of life through food in many respects. And th what, the way we brand it is ordinary people, extraordinary food, and really that's the essence of it. You, know, you don't want to resist the temptation to try, it, to try to overdo it too much. Is that the same for you, Thierry? Yeah, I think the, um, to me, MasterChef needs to remain as it is, which is an amazing mm -hmm. journey and an amazing event. Maybe from time to time it could be good, especially for charity, to do maybe specials with celebrities as a one-off event. Mm -hmm. um, but to me, the grown-up version of MasterChef and the kid version I by far the, uh, the two most interesting uh, version and uh, alteration of the, f of the format. And what about you, Joe? Is, uh, are you going to go be the judge on any other Well, you know, uh, it's funny. Um, I have a comment on Junior. My mother just jumped on board, and she's a judge for MasterChef Junior in Italy. And the cultural difference of how you have to treat kids in Italy and in America are very different. And it's a very different TV show. Yes, um, you just can't have that kind of very, uh, that Anglo-Saxon -Anglo American kind of removal, you know, that we're, you know, you're, you know, that line that we can draw between adults and children. In Italy, the culture dictates that children have to be physically nurtured and there's, there's, that, there's no, there, is, there isn't that Anglo kind of separation between children and and their taskmasters or adults in this case, and they're much more, they're much more um, nurturing, much more physical, much more in an, treating them like Italian families would treat them because they wouldn't. The Italians culture couldn't probably accept the American product. Of course, they'll watch it and they'll like it, but to do it in Italy, it wouldn't work as a production. So this is another example of how the format can be modified to fit even culturally in uh, all these varying markets throughout the world. Any more places for you to go? To judge on? Um, I've been a guest. I, I did Israel, Canada, um, Turkey, Poland, Romania. I want to go to China. I'm trying to get to Australia. 
It's fun. It's kind of like when you're part of a big family. You just show up, and there's a set, and you know where everything is, and there's three judges, and they invite you on stage, and you know we throw some plates around. It's good fun. Is it as simple as that, indeed? <laughs> Easy. <laughs> Easy One, breezy. Wonderful. Well, thank you very much, guys. Um, now, let's just give them a round of applause. So thank you very much.